Okay, my, but seven. Ha! Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome, 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 Daniel. Welcome, everyone. Um, let me just do some little housekeeping here. Share screen, and let me unlock. Let me unlock the meeting to everyone to join. One, one second, just I need. Betty, how are you? Ha <laughs> ha. So in the waiting room. And then. <laughs> Hello, Victor. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, all right, good. So let's do this. Um, Scala versus Java. <laughs> uh, well, here we are, as both of us. So you can see me on the left hand side and Daniel here. Um, I'll quickly introduce me briefly and then let Daniel introduce himself. My name is Vitorenta. I'm a Java champion. I founded this community. I have a blog. Um, I do training for a living. Uh, for eight years, very intense training on these topics. But, um, um, right, the functional programming that will be useful today to me because I am matching Daniel here. Daniel, please tell, tell us about you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel. Um, I am a Scala uh, developer and, and instructor at Rock the JVM, uh, a website that I created. And I'm really happy to meet everyone. I'm new to this community, and I'm happy to code alongside Victor for this, uh, what, I, what I hope is going to be a good coding session. Right. So uh, without, other, without further uh, waste of time, let's jump into the code. So tick, tick. And then uh, we will try to do something very, uh, very powerful today. We will try to code in parallel. This is a little plugin that we discovered. It's called Code With Me. Uh, let's hope it suits us today. Uh, it has some issues sometimes, but let's hope we can we can use it uh, properly. OK, so let's dive into the code. Uh, the code that we will do is an imperative style code uh, written in Java. The Scala part is on the, is on the right hand side. and uh, I will first read the code in Java and then slowly move towards I and mean, discuss with Daniel various best practices. Um, the example you might be already familiar with, I've done it in several occasions in the different talks, but the point is, I've, it's a simplification of that example, with the aim of focusing on exactly what matters today, functional programming. Um, and I'd like to start with the movie class. Make it more, yes, the movie class. It is a typical class in Java. It's yeah, movie uh, enum. The enum it's already you can see it in Scala in the right hand side, and um, um, private string title. Uh, and uh, IntelliJ already suggests that this might be final. Uh, and then you ask yourself, category can't it be final also? So this can also be removed the setter. And while the setter is gone, this can be translated also here and made, made final. Now. This is a typical Java code, but I made it immutable for this occasion, for this particular case. So, um, Daniel, your turn. <laughs> you're, you're on mute, Daniel, one second. My apologies. So uh, this is a typical uh, refactoring style when you want to move from Java to Scala or when you want to mute from a, an imperative to a functional style code. If, if you want to change your data structures in an immutable style in Java with getters and stuff, you usually replace that with case classes in Scala. So an equivalent way of de declaring such a class in Scala would be to define a case class. And I'm going to name this movie and this movie uh, class will take the parameters that are fields in Victor's class. So we have a title as a string and the category, or I'm going to name this C category as a movie constants dot category. And with this line of code, you can define a class that already has these constructor arguments already set as fields. And so whenever you construct this class by new movie with a title and a category, then you can automatically access those fields and those fields are final. So you cannot really change them. Cool. Very cool. So I'm a bit ashamed of Java at this moment. So that uh, why not moving a bit further and try to do something similar. Let's first rename this category to be movie category. Let's take this in enum out of this class. Or actually, you know what? I don't really need to do that, honestly. Uh, I could leave it as it was. No, my, 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 my bad. And I could uh, switch from a public class to a public record. Oh my God, no. Java, Java 15. And this will allow me to uh, basically imitate the syntax. So it's like uh, string title. Can you see the, the, the resemblance? 
and category, 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 category. Interesting, category, perfect. Now this can be removed. The constructor can be removed. Getters can be removed, but before removing them, I need to, to rename them basically because in the Java records, the names are, <coughs> are exactly as the name of the field, um, like the following, so like, like this. And once you match these to be the same, you can remove these because these are automatically generated by Java. So yeah, phew, we got, that was close, yeah. And good, now let's, uh, let's see further what we have. Um, we have this, this customer and uh, this customer has a name and a map of rentals. Now, how do we translate this to Scala? So we are gonna, probably gonna uh, need a similar pattern. When you have a private field in a class, you push those to constructor arguments in an immutable class. So instead of having mutable data structures, if you wanna do pure functional programming, you will need to translate those into immutable data structures. And the way that you do that in Scala is to pass those values as constructor arguments. Whenever you need to change those, you will need to construct a new data structure. This might sound a bit wasteful for uh, Java programmers diving into Scala, but it's actually not in practice. And the recent JVM garbage collectors are usually quite, uh, quite fast and they, um, they quickly dispense of uh, very short lived objects. And so if you want to change this pattern or move from this pattern of private fields to Scala, uh, this is a similar pattern that I would do to uh, convert this class that we called customer here with a private field, um, which is called name and another private field called rentals. And we pass those as constructor arguments to an immutable customer class. So if you want uh, to do something like this in Scala, I'm going to create another case class name this customer and this customer will have a name as a string and a rentals map and the way that you do uh, maps in Scala you, is to use the map data type with we have here movie and int so in Scala we have the int data type um, and I'm also going to we have the movie constants object over here you probably know from uh, from um, does anyone have Scala experience here? Maybe in the chat or whatever you have there. Uh, uh, like basic syntax. So an object is basically a singleton pattern implemented in a single line. When you, when you define something like this, an object movie constants, you define both the type movie constants and the only possible instance of that type in a single line. Now, when uh, when you define movie constants like that, you also define the only value of this type. And so when you, um, when you use, for example, this field of movie constants, you refer to that as, for example, print line movie constants dot children, if you want to ever use those fields. Uh, now, uh, the pattern that we follow in Scala, if you want to make use of private to the class or instance-based values and not instance-based values like static-based values in Java, you would have a class and an object with the same name in the same file. And when you have something like this, and I'm going to rename this movie constants to simply movie, when you have a class called movie and a singleton called movie in the same file, these are called companions. And companions can access each other's private fields. And this is how you can implement so-called static functionality because you can simply access movie.children, which is a constant, a class level constant. So if I had a static function in my customer, that would in my movie, that would go in the object movie, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, interesting. Right. Now, um, let's look uh, arbitrarily at this method. Private double compute price takes a movie, takes days rented, and then uh, computes the price. Price plus equal, price plus equal, and then if, and then price, and then break. And then the price so it gets returned over there. And uh, you know what's the most funny thing of all, that in case you discover, in case you introduce a new enum value tomorrow, that enum value will have the price equal to zero. Panic, because yeah, you just forgot to add the default. 
ouch. So basically, in, in Java, the, the, way, the way we 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 are doing this today is that after the the last case, you typically introduce a default branch that throws an exception in order to defend yourself against a feature variable that you will add inside that uh, that enum, right? Now with this default, it will throw with exception, but. Um, um, how would you do such a such a thing uh, in in Scala? I'm, I'm curious. So um, we we need to return a value in this method, right? So in compute price, we return a single value. And so uh, in Scala, there is a there is a, an expression called pattern matching, which can be evaluated to a single value. And so if we wanted to define this compute price. Uh, method in a in this case class that I called customer. I'm going to define this method. Let's call this compute price, which takes a movie as an argument and some in the uh, days rented, days rented as an int. Now, the the result the result value of a method in Scala is one single expression. So in Scala. When you define a method, you need to put an equal sign. And after that, you need to put a single expression, which gives back the result of that method. And so uh, in Scala, we have a pattern match, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, we need to check for movie.category, right? So we need to do movie.category match. And here we put the various cases that we might match. So if I'm, for example, uh, case, my indent fails over here. Uh, in case we get movie.regular, and then again, a single expression. So here we have price plus equals two, uh, days rented, uh, if days rented bigger than two, price plus equal days rented minus two or whatever. So um, we need to return the price. And so we will need to return two you plus. Ah, you're right. Okay. okay. So two plus uh, days rented minus two times 1.5. So this is the expression. The, this is the one expression that gets that gets returned. Wait, wait. I don't think it's. Uh, what about the if? Where is the if? Oh, got it. So we're gonna. Uh, yeah, right. So we have days rented bigger than two. Uh, then we are adding this expression or not? Fine. Uh, in Scala, we have the if expression. So if days rented bigger than two, then this one else zero. Two plus if, oh my God, how this looks, two plus if. <laughs> yeah, so the if statement, the if expression in Scala is very similar to the ternary operator uh, in Java. So you have the condition, question mark, first expression, colon, the other expression. Cool, <laughs> super cool. If, so you, have it, to, you have to put an else, right? Yeah, you have to put an else. So um, I'm going to, um, let's say, Let's extract these, these into a val. Let's call this uh, more days rented price as this if expression. And then I'm going to return to plus more days rented price. But where so is the return? There is no return. The, the return is implied here. So the last statement over here is the return. So this is the last, because this is the last expression of this code path, the last expression is the final expression of the entire thing. And you don't really need brackets anymore. No, we don't need brackets anymore. And in Scala, in Scala 3, which is upcoming in, uh, in two months, you will need even fewer brackets than those. But this is basically what's going to happen in a case. So if movie category is movie.regular, then the expression which gives the value of the method is two plus this thing, where this thing is whatever was computed before with the if expression. Uh, and can you type one plus case? Can you do that if, at line no. eight? You... Uh, I mean, I can do one plus this thing. Ah, uh -huh. a match, one, a match. Oh, I see. The whole pattern match expression. Yes, 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 perfect, perfect. Let me just uh, compress my code a bit to see. 
the mesh. Okay, now let me go ahead and uh, copy the other code. So I'm going to have uh, movie dot new release, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. So uh, price plus days rented times three. So I'm going to have uh, days rented times three. And in case I get children, then I'm going to do say movie.children. And then I'm going to do pretty much the same thing as I did in the first case. So I'm going to have, say, copy this, more days rented price. If days rented bigger than three, and I'm going to do days rented minus three times 1.5, otherwise zero. And then I'm going to return 1.5 plus this thing. And in case I get anything else, then we get a uh, so-called match error, which is a very similar exception that Victor has uh, explicitly thrown here in illegal state uh, exception. So if a pattern match fails, if no case, case is matched, then Scala will automatically throw an exception in your face. It's called the match error. Uh, well, then I have a similar question on in both YouTube and Zoom. Can do you the somehow do you have a uh, something similar to a, a static import in Java? So uh, what they mean is that they I think they don't like the movie dot part in the case. Gotcha. So you can uh, you can import movie inside the case class. I guess. Yeah, you can import wherever in Scala. You can do yeah, you can do whatever you like, and you can check that out. Oh, good. And one, one more thing about the map. Uh, someone asked, when, when you add a, a value to a map, do that construct a new map? Yes. Yes. And um, uh, when you're well, talking about immutable maps, so there, yes. are, there are mutable and immutable maps. We, in pure functional programming, we work with immutable maps, in which case this is true. Whenever you want to add a new association, you construct a new map. So that map that you used, is it immutable already? Yes, the map data structure that with this type alias, when you simply say map, then there is the immutable map. When, if you it. want to do, if you want to do the mutable part, you have to specify it yourself. <laughs> okay, right. So yeah, Daniel killed us with this. It's so short, but there. Wait a second. We also have Java 15 over there, right? So let's do the same. <laughs> Return switch. Let's do that. So first of all, before doing that, we need to clean up the code just a bit. Super cool stuff. So um, how do I do that? Let me just check. The first thing uh, that uh, I, it annoys me very much in Java is that, let me just, can I do that? Yeah. Let me just add that and that. Sorry, ah, that's it. Okay, and then this price should, can I move return closer to computation? Very good stuff. It puts it inside every case. At which moment the switch can be replaced, which is switch uh, almost. I then have to repeat now. In Java, something very, very ugly happens. Uh, I see it in the legacy code. Uh, it's called uh, somehow a, a hoisting of variables. The price over here cascades in the next block. This is impossible in Scala, I, I bet. Uh, it's, it's a misery. Yeah. Yeah. It's a legacy from, from the C language, basically. So to avoid that, I added this, these little brackets there so that I can, I can then duplicate this price and declare it in every block. No matter how, how stupid you might, this might think, it's a quick fix to that. And then at which moment, I think IntelliJ could figure out that I can Return, yes. Ah, not yet. Not yet. I need to do more stuff before. I need to make methods out of that. Compute regular price. Uh, and then drop the brackets. Good. Here, compute. Actually, that's quite stupid. It's equal to directly, right? So, and inline that too. Okay, good. And unwrap the block. And then here it's compute children uh, price, unwrap the block. And at which moment, I hope IntelliJ will figure out that since I'm using Java 15, I can do return switch. Yes. But yeah, I had to write these. Right? It's not that clean as your code, really. Uh, I could do some more improvements, but mm, yeah, in this case, I think Scala wins. <laughs> you can do a, a scoreboard. <laughs> Scala wins on this one. Uh, yeah, it, it is a bit challenging to read it at, at first, but you get used to it uh, in a moment. Uh, so that's what we the switch. Interesting, interesting. Then uh, let's look at the map that we saw there. Now, this map over here, it's linking movie to integer. And then in your four over here, I am iterating over keys. And the next line, I am getting the 
the value out of the map based on the key that I have just iterated on. This is um, um, sometimes seen as a code smell and Sonar sometimes will complain that you could actually better iterate over entry set. That's, that's what sometimes Sonar suggests. So we can do rentals.entryset.for on the entry set. And then, uh, and then on that entry, you find whatever you want. You want to get key, which is the, uh, the movie, 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 alt enter, enter, movie. And then you get the value out of it, which is the, yeah, I should have, which is the day's, re the day's rented, I think days rented but if you ever iterate over entries in a map that's a, that's a code smell um, in my opinion that, that's very often a code smell because uh, it means that you are treating a map as a degenerate collection like a like a sequential collection a map is supposed to be to be to be used to, to retrieve values like map of something dot get if you don't of, of arbitrary keys if you just sweep through the through the, through the keys that's you could basically do better than that because you see you're just adding here these two in the map with the put method. And then why are you adding them to, to get them back here by iterating over entry set? So what, what I really miss here really in Java, it's a class. I miss a class instead of a map between these two, I could have a list of, how do you call movie plus integer? The hint is here. It's a list of rental, which is rental. Let me call it rental list for just for a moment. And then this is new array list, Oops, array list. I don't have a rental class, of course. Let me record, record uh, rental with movie, movie, and int days rented. And I need to put brackets, I think, in Java. Good. And then list here is imported. And the same thing we will do in a moment in Scala. Let's see. So list and rental list. And I will just then switch from whenever I add it to the map. I could add to the list instead, instead rental list dot add of a new rental with movie and they are, ah, this was a suggestion already there. Thank you. Good. And then instead of iterating over here, I could instead iterate over the end, the rental list dot for on that rental. And the rental has movie, you see? Now, um, how, how will this change translate into Scala from, from, from a map to a list? How would you do that, Daniel? Um, so the idea is that you don't necessarily change from a map to a list. Uh, I can very easily change this rentals thing from a map to a list of rentals. So I can say list of rental and I can define a case class called rental with a uh, movie as a movie and the days rented as an int. And that's the whole change. The interesting thing is that when you add a rental, this is a method returning void, which we want to avoid in pure functional programming because this is called a side effect. And side effects are usually not wanted uh, in, uh, in the logic of your program. Uh, that is because in pure functional programming, we work with the values and expressions which compose these values and compute new ones. And so we don't work with things that simply do something. Um, and so instead of having a void method that adds a rental that mutates a field in this customer class, uh, we want to add an add rental method which instead returns a new customer. And uh, this is part of the immutability principle which is stays at the foundation of functional programming. And so I'm going to add here, let's call this add rental which takes a movie as a movie and uh, days rented as an integer. And this will return a value. This will not return void. It will return a new customer. And in this case, I'm going to add a new customer, which in, because I've defined it as a case class, not a, as a class, I can use customer without the new constructor and I'm gonna have the same name and rentals here will be modified with this new rental. And so I can say uh, rental with movie and days rented prepended to rentals. Now, the interesting thing is, and we need to discuss about that, Victor, uh, is the mm -hmm. fact that you change the rentals from a map 
to a list. And the map makes the assumption that only one movie can have uh -huh. a can have a day's rented uh, value there. So we need to discuss about that. Yes, indeed, indeed. That's a bit tricky. Um, the record now implements hash code equals based on its fields, just like in your case, or title category is, you can't have two movies with the same title category now. Uh, you couldn't had before, mm -hmm. but you can now. So maybe I, I should switch from list to linked hash set. Perhaps that could be better in this regard, maybe. Uh, what would be the equivalent of that in, in Scala? I really don't know. A well, set which it's just, order. Uh, it's just a set. Um, and I'm going to code against, I, as I'm looking at, at it right now, I'm going to code against the set interface. And uh, when I actually instantiate this customer, I'm actually going to use a set implementation like a linked hash set like you like you use. And so instead of doing this prepending thing, I'm going to say rentals plus the new object. Whoa, what's that? Plus. So plus simply adds this object into the set while preserving equality hash code and uh, things that the set interface guarantees. So when you add plus, you simply add an item to the set. And the result of this expression is a new set, which can also contains a new element. Mm -hmm. Interesting, super cool. <laughs> cool, right. Uh, so we changed that. Wow, it's a good, good and a nice discussion. And that thing with returning a new customer, ah, that kills me. Because in Java, I don't, if I do that in Java, I will have to clone my linked hash set. Java, I don't think it's prepared to do that. Let me try to, to imitate what, what you just did. New customer, right? Uh, of, of what? I, first of all, name, I should take the parameter also the, but I, I don't like that, you know what? Because I will need to, let me just uh, ju jump to the problem really. I need to clone my, 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 my hash set, first of all, my linked hash set. I need to create a new one based on of my own rental list, which is not no, no longer a rental list, really. Shift F6, it's rental list, that's it. So I need to clone that first, clone. And then clone, oh, by the way, so this, did I hear someone saying immutable set from Guava, maybe? Immutable set would be better than this, probably. But the Java standard collections clone dot add the new movie the new rental over here. Like I've just created it here and then do what? And then on that, ooh la la. So clone.add and then do what? Return, ooh, new customer. And that, that's unexpected in Java, ooh, movie, let's see. I need to get the name, the same name, so name. And then the what? The new list, the clone, the clone set. All right, so I need to have a constructor You're taking both of these. Let me do that constructor first. Oops, not, I want both of you. Ah, I can't. I need to refactor a bit more here. So let me alt enter, constructor parameter. Good. Something like that. And then here, the clone, ah, almost. And I return rental, but then I have to take care wherever I use that because that's imperative style also. That, that shouldn't work like that. But instead, Customer, I will start. Oh, I need an overload. Just I'm taking some, some a bit of too much time. Sorry, but it's Java, it's verbose. <laughs> so I will delegate to my canonical constructor here, passing the name further and the new hash linked hash set, something like that. And then on the other hand, this will compile without the rental having the default constructor, but then I will have to chain these together like this. Uh, chaining over, but this is now. Uh, this clones a new hash set every time with all the buckets and everything. But it kind of made it somehow. Yeah, yeah. I think I've managed to translate it. Clone, uh, do I? Yeah. That's kind yeah, of. Yeah, I it. think I think this is I think this is true. But I write I wrote quite a lot. You just put a plus. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, what else? What else? Let's see. Um, now that we have a rental. What did we have a rental? How about moving the computer? Uh, uh, here, I'm passing movie and days rented here. Um, compute price, we also have a compute price. Since we have a rental, let's both of us uh, pass a rental inside as an argument to the compute price, shall we? So compute price, sure. And let me, how do I do that easy in, in Scala, in Java? Uh, rental, rental, yeah, let's pass the rental here. Rental, right, and then can we, can we move this? in a second step, 
let's just do that. Rental, rental, and then Oh, you did, you, oh, 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 what's that? Line 15, what's that? Yeah, what? so, so what I'm, what I, um, we can do it in the, this in multiple ways. So I can say, explain, explain, explain. It was yeah, cool. I'm going to cut this out and then, how do you call this? and then I'm going to get back to this. So I can say, Val, let's call this movie as rental.movie. And I can say, days rented as rental dot days rented so i can i can do these just just fine and deconstruct the rental type into its constituent parts like movie and days rented in scala we can do pattern matching on the spot much like you do you can do in python so you can say val and then you can build a pattern here and then the compiler will bind these two values to whatever the fields of rental uh, are Interesting. Uh, I, 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 I have a prophecy to do. I think in Java, we will also have this in Java 23. Right? <laughs> yeah, 17 plus 6 equals 23. I think in 23, it will be there. We are moving slowly towards that. We, uh, in Java, in this autumn, Java 17, we will, do, we will have a pattern matching on classes with sealed classes. But you, you can also do that, right? We can match here over, if this were an object, you can match over the concrete type that, you, that the object could have, right? Yes, you can also match against uh, has that. It's not in scope for today, but so, uh, right. So this is this structuring, a very cool feature. But then uh, can, can, can we move this function compute price inside the, the rental itself? L let me, Daniel, just, just let me, no, you can't just move it like that. Let, let's move this to that function, to that rental class. Sure. Six, to do this, to fix this, this feature envy that we are facing here. Yeah, you, you blocked me while you were doing that move. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Can you can you edit now the code? Yeah. Yes. So I can like take this out, and I'm going to paste it here. I cannot paste it. Why can I not paste it? Wow. Did I paste it so many times? Uh, yeah. I think I did something. Let me. I want to touch the keyboard. You type it. Control Z. Or... Okay. So <laughs> <Sorry>. let me. <laughs> it was not here. This plugin is not perfect. Yet. Yeah. Um, I think we, okay. Uh, I'm not seeing my code anymore. Uh, it's probably a synchronization issue. Uh, you're not seeing your code anymore. Yeah. I did not see what I, what I typed, but I, I can see it now. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, brilliant. Okay. Let me go ahead and import movie. And here I have compute price. And this is, I, have, I don't need the rental anymore. I only need this instance. And that is basically it. And I can cut out the import movie. Right. Good. Uh, and let me just do my part now. Move to public. Done. Ah, I do have something left. Uh, F6, I think it should move. We should move it to, but uh, I am here. Let's move it in the rental. Continue, let's see what happens. Um, the advantage that, oh, compute regular, I should move the other functions too. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, let me. The advantage that we indeed have in Java, at least for a moment, is that the, the ID that we are using, it's a bit, I mean, it's, yeah, very good. So it helps us a lot. The default is no longer needed over here, by the way, because, uh, yeah. Good, uh, let me see. So we've moved this into that rental class, very good. Now, can we create a function in the movie which checks, how would you do that? A function in movie that checks whether or not you are a new release movie. I will do that myself here, but how would you do it in Scala? Um, there are multiple ways you can do it. You can, you can have a method like exactly like you wrote this is new release. We can have, for example, def is new release. Um, and this can return a category equals uh, new release. That would be a function, right? Yes, so this is also a method. It, it takes no arguments, it takes no, uh, it takes no param parentheses, and this is kind of like an accessor method. 
And we can copy this for is children. And I'm going to compare that to children. And then for regular. Yeah, but to keep it simple, let's stick to just one of them, right? It's okay. just this need that's what I only need now. Right, so that's a function. You said there are multiple ways. What do you mean? Um, you can do uh, you can do something like this, or you can define multiple movies for uh, every uh, children regular and new release. So instead of having a, a simple movie class, you can have a class hierarchy in which uh, you can have specific movies for children, specific movies for regular and specific movies for new releases. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I see. But let's not do that. It's too much typing, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think I remember something about uh, uh, you can use, you can use before, instead of death, you can use val or what do you Yes, you can use something. You can also use val because these things do, do not change. And so if you the, if you define a method with def, if you call that method, it will be reevaluated every time you call it, just like a regular method. This is what we normally expect. But if I define that as a val, that is a field of the class because it's computed once. And when you refer to that, you you simply use whatever value that was computed at the time. Whoa, so it's evaluated just at, co at construction time, basically. Yes, so it's evaluated once at construction time. Let me try to do that in, in Java. Public, final, is new release. And uh, th those of you who know Java know that this won't work because in record you can't put uh, extra fields. You are not allowed to add, add fields. So this in Java is impossible. This in Java is impossible. Okay, good. Nice, this new release. Right, what else? Let's come back to the customer and let's see what we have here. We have an add frequent render points. And this function here that we, we see, uh, if I extract this just a bit, uh, like uh, add points, I see the following strange thing happening. Um, I see that I take as a parameter, the frequent render points, and I am returning back the same frequent render points, which, um, which is a bit strange because yeah, Although I'm not changing anything, this function is just returning values. But can I, what would be the, what would be a functional style, a more pure functional style of doing that? Uh, if you want to do, do it functionally, I would suggest making that frequent render points final and see what happens. Oh, interesting idea. So, but this one. Yes. Whoa, <laughs> Whoa my God. It's like val, right? Your val. That's exactly. Your val. Yep. So make it hit, make it hit a val and let's, let's see what happens. This is not been compiled. Ouch. Because what do I need to do? I am I am accumulating basically here. Yep. I'm accumulating here. But let me take a, a smaller step. That, 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 that was a too big step for me as an as a Java developer. I would I would first come here and make sure that I return the value, but I'm not taking the value anymore. So let me do this int starting from zero from one in this case, because it was plus plus plus. And I am returning what I have to, uh, so it's not add point anymore, it's get points. So here, plus equals. That, that's the, to me, that'll be the first step. Compute, cool. compute points or new points, added points, added points, added points. And then, and then let's try to make it final. Oops, doesn't work. How the heck would you fix that? Uh, maybe, you know what, um, how, would, how would you write this? I think, do you have all the necessary pieces? You have, you don't have the compute added points. So let's, let's add this, but you know what? Now that I realize this is, this can be moved into the rental class itself. Yeah. Because it's actually, so you can, you can go ahead and, and type it yourself and put it in your rental. Let's see how this feels. With the uh, uh, watcher points or compute points. Compute points. Um, and this would be We have frequent render points. Just a, a pause for, for two seconds, please. Just a second. I need, I need to move something. Cool. Just yeah, now, now we can continue. Yes. Can you continue or is it okay? Uh, yes. So uh, did you move that to the rental? Okay. Because yeah. uh, I need to watch the logic. So. Oh, if, sorry. <laughs> I just moved the logic. Sorry. <laughs> oh, um, sorry, sorry. Compute added points in the in the grand class. Yes, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> the okay. code just disappeared. No? So you have here two, else one. So this is basically the logic, right? If the movie is new release and days rented is bigger than two, then you return basically two. Otherwise, return one. 
Yeah, but could you could you try to make it the same as that? Because you know, the returning two and returning one, it's not the same express the same the, the the same expression as I have it here. It's you're not saying that you're adding one more point in a, in a way. Frequent render points plus one. Otherwise, frequent render points. Ah, interesting. Or you can, you can make it base points. If you want. Let me do that because it's a, it's a, it's a refactor. Uh, yeah. Base point. The uh, the one who is invited in a in a session can, can't refactor. By the way, in with this plugin. Cool. Yeah. Right. So base point equals one, and then if ah, and then that if is the, sorry. I should, that if is the final expression of this of this def. So that's ah, I see. So that's the return. So yeah. it's as if I wrote something like return the result of this expression. So let me take this uh, slow. So in Scala, we have code blocks, which are delimited by these curly braces. And curly braces are one single expression. And the value of this expression is the value of its last constituent expression. So if, for example, I return 45 here, the number 45 is the return value of the entire block. 45 is the last expression. And so 45 will give the value of the entire block. But then the if is useless somehow, or if, if that is the case, then the if is useless. That's that's why we put the if at the end because this is the result that we want to obtain. But could you write a, a very identical code in Scala as I did with, I mean, changing stuff? How, how would that look? Just for a second, I know you don't like uh, uh, to change stuff, but how would you translate it identically the what I wrote? Yes. Okay. That, yes. Let's call this mutable. And I'm going to have base points equals one. And instead of having a val, which is a variable in your case, I'm going to have it a var. And so I'm going to have base points plus equals one. And I'm going to simply return base points. So a var in Scala is pretty much identical to a final int in, in your method. Interesting. So basically, that that var allows you to change stuff. Uh -huh. Yes. So the var allows you to write plus equals, and so it allows you to change the value of that variable. But when you write a val, a val like this, this is final, and so mm -hmm. you need to compute your stuff in terms of this final thing instead of mutating it. And is it is it a good practice to use var then? In, no, in, in it's not. No. No. Uh, and one one more thing. Uh, how about this? If I, I see that in in a in a in a if that is supposed to return values like the one at line twenty nine, uh, I see that in that kind of if you have to have an else, right? If I, if I comment this out, this will not. What would you do? Oh my god, don't do that. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing: um, if you define an if in this case, um, if you define an if like that that I've highlighted, this is also an expression. So I can define that as an expression. And you can give this uh, this expression the value of this statement over here, but the um, the type of this expression is called unit for the equivalent of void in other languages, including Java. So it's as if I defined a variable of type void, whose value is the result of this expression. So this if does things that is it mutates the base points, but it doesn't return any any mean, meaningful value, although it could. So it changes things, and because it changes things, it can return void, basically. Yes, so this is uh, identical to void in Java. Oh my god. So, and I guess this kind of if is also a bad practice, right? Yes. This if that returns void, because you are supposed to return values in functional programming all the time. Yes. Wow. Wow. Super cool. Thanks, thanks a lot for the, it's quite, quite clear. So basically, I guess the, the Java developer, the standard Java developer that would be thrown at Java, he would just probably write code that like you wrote here, 35 to 39, right? That's the starting point, mm -hmm. right? the, the direct translation, but then you can, you should move towards the more functional. Interesting, interesting. Uh, in my regard, can I, can I do this also? Well, I could, but I'm not very proud of the code that will turn out. I mean, you could do something like, let me just, uh, uh, what to do a ternary probably here? One and no, no, no. You, I mean, sure. No, but it's no. It's just... you don't. You don't need to turn uh, uh, to say uh, to use the ternary operator. You can make the frequent renter points final, and then if this condition is true, you can return 
base planes plus one. Otherwise, ah, return. You're right. I didn't saw it. Very good. Very good. Indeed. And yeah, why not? Cool. Now, this actually could be converted to a, I think, a ternary. Or I think I should, I could, if, I, if I put an else here, that I will figure out that I could replace this with a ternary. But this is not really. Ah, mm, mm, this is not such so readable in Java, and so I'd rec I I would say that you, that your previous it, it, it's similar somehow to what you wrote. This is the similar it's... part. Yes, this is the similar part, but it's less readable in Java because of the structure okay. of the ternary operator. In this particular case, maybe stick with with this style, right? Although, although just to be genuine, me, I think that if you that you keep the functions small enough, tiny enough. I think it's not that the end of the world if you do mutate this in U plus plus. But indeed, a pure functional style would have final variables over here. And, uh, some from, from the audio suggested using val from Lombok. I don't have that extension installed here, but you do you also have val from Lombok. I never really saw it in production until now, but yeah, hacking the language. And let's come back to our challenge. So Daniel challenged me to make this, to make this work <laughs> by putting a final here. How the heck would I do that? Well, it actually it calls for a more brutal, more, more dramatic change in the, in the design at this moment. You see, I uh, compute a point to add here, and I return it there. And then I do what? I iterate basically over rentals, and at every iteration, I compute based on, the, based on that rental. And what I do, oh, by the way, why do I pass this as a parameter? I think I don't need to pass this. No, no, it was just uh, uh, for historical reasons. So basically, this here, yeah, how could you do that? One idea, I know it's a bit uh, mind-blowing for most Java developers, but and typically in my training, that's what when they start screaming. And what are you doing? Hey, you broke the four. Oh my God! What did you do? Why did you break the four? I broke the four because the four was doing multiple things. The four was computing total amount, points, and result. And I, and I extracted that part that was handling only the frequent render points, and I did that. And now, if I if I do that, I'll enter on the four. If in the four you are doing just one little thing, you can alt enter that, and you can replace with two. This is, this is awesome. Yes, but I think what you're about to show us will be even more awesome. So can, can you do the same kind of style, the same kind of code in a, in a statement function? It, it didn't create it yet, I think. A statement function? Yeah, there you go. Let me share the screen with that. All right, so I've just made the statement string. I'm going to return question marks at the end so that the code can compile. Um, and I'm going to have, let's call this, so we have frequent renter points, right? So I'm gonna have val frequent renter points as rentals map. And when you pass a map function, you need to pass a lambda that is an anonymous function between a rental and an int. So I'm going to have computed add points. So I'm gonna have underscore dot, actually let me, let me not use underscore. So assuming a rental, I'm going to have rental dot compute points. So this is now a set of integers. Now, this is not necessarily what I want if I compute a set, because if two movies or two rentals give back the same result, then those numbers will occur only once in the set. And this is not what I want. And so I need to convert that to a list so that I can actually sum those numbers up. Ah, I didn't know that. So otherwise it propagates the idea that it's a set. Yes, it's, it's, going, it's going to be a set at the end. So uh, right now, this is a list of integers. So right now, we're, go we're good. Now, in order to sum up this, the elements of the list and return an int at the end, I'm going to call sum as well. <laughs> but is it a function call or what is that? You didn't put brackets. Uh, I didn't put brackets. This something is still a method call. It doesn't have any arguments or any parentheses, much like we did. Um, where do we do? Where do we do that? We had the is new release thing where we had the def. If you remember that. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. The sum uh, method also uh, works in the same way. So it's defined without any parentheses or without any arguments. But this is a method call. But is there is there a rule about that? When uh, do you put parentheses or not? Uh, there's 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 only an unwritten rule uh, when you when you should do these. Um, but so the question is, how do you decide between methods without parentheses or with parentheses? And methods without parentheses are usually accessor methods, something like sum or getting a value or 
testing whether a value is of a particular kind, like is new release. So things of that nature, you put, uh, you'd create them as methods without any parentheses. So I guess a method without a parenthesis, you expect it just to get data. Actually, can you call that, that can we say that a function without a parenthesis should be a pure function in Scala? Pretty much. Um, in, in pure functional programming, all methods should be pure in the sense that they should simply return values and not do anything else, like print something or dump files or change other global variables or some stuff like that. So these are pure functions. Um, and in Scala, it's good, at least in the functional programming style, it's a good practice to make methods pure in the sense that you simply return values and don't do anything else, which is what this sum method also does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, um, we should strive to make all the functions pure. Pretty much. Uh, and can I say, that, can, I, can I understand that if, if, I, if I really manage to make a function pure, then I am safe to leave out the brackets for that function? It depends. So if you have, for example, um, uh, I can't find a good example uh, here, but uh, there are cases in which you might want to keep parameters, uh, parentheses for, uh, for the methods. Um, I'm, I don't have a good, uh, a good use case in mind for now, but this is pretty much the pattern. And okay. so, uh, and one other thing in order to make this code a little bit shorter, instead of this, so this, this expression over here that I've highlighted is a Lambda, this is a function value in which for every rental you uh, compute points and this returns an int. In Scala, you can do that in shorthand by saying underscore dot compute points, much like you, uh, you pass the compute points uh, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's better. That's very good. Oh, my God. Now, that's short. So there is no dot stream in between. There is no parentheses for two lists. There is no arrow. There is no arrow <laughs> anymore. And the sum of no parentheses. Now, that's super short. That's super short. Interesting. Well, um, um, let me just check whether... Uh, well, whether we uh, would show anything new with what remains in this exercise. What would we do here? If I, I assume that if I ask you, they would, you would tell me, make a method that returns this string concatenation, probably, right? That would be your advice. I here. would say make them final, like you did with Inquiry Enterprise. Of course, <laughs> make them final. <laughs> and then we would bang on ahead. How the heck can I make them final? Yes, but one thing we could do in small steps is to. Uh, first of all, make sure we don't change the result two times here, but just only only once, and slowly move towards like create or format footer, for example. Right? And uh, this will leave out the uh, this will return the function, and in Scala probably that will be a def equals just that. And then the result. Oh, can I make this? Yeah, make it final. But how the heck? Because it's a lot of changes happening here. Total amount. Oh, by the way, the one little detail here. I know it's a bit. Um, do you need to notice the underline over here? The underline only only is underneath the variables which are changed in Java. So also in in, in the in your ID in, in IntelliJ will point you to the variables that you assign, because you don't assign this. Right? So even though all right, basically IntelliJ helps you a bit on that, tells you that you are changing a variable that, that you might not want to. Uh, right. So make that final. Hard, easy to say, because let, let, let's try. This result over here is created here and changed here. Can I break the same, do the same thing with breaking the four? If I do that, I could move this up. Let's try that. And then I need movie. Where is my movie? Here. Good. Oh. I need to leave it down also here. Or no, I don't need it there. Or I don't need it. Movie and price. Where is my price? Here, price. Good. And nice. then what? Price, right? Price. And then let's inline the movie. Let's inline the price. Let's make a variable from this. Format statement line. And then what happens? Uh, well. Let me move this down. I still need to change it. How do I do that? Well, uh, if you want to, do you want a hint or do you want to? Yes, yes, yes. Give me a hint. 
so I would say, uh, so you've come quite a long way. Uh, so you have three pieces of this result. You have the first piece, you have the second piece, and you have the third piece. Well, okay. you can extract this and create a value out of it. Ha, let's do that. So I'll extract this, wait a second, this part. Um, value you say and then this will be re returned so then i don't need to take this in and return it back somehow so basically like that i think something like, and just right, return something interesting let's try string result equals but i still change it but then if i if i am this close can i can i make it better than that let me just check uh, we can but we need to type it by hand a second with stream api because what we are doing, we are concatenating some strings. So in order to avoid reassigning these variables, we could start from the rental, do a map, rental, re, sorry, rental do, rentals, dot. Am I, am I right? No, I'm not. Yes, rentals, oh. dot, stream. Mm -hmm. why, why doesn't it compile? Why, what did I do wrong? Stream dot, yeah, map. And how, how, would, you, how would you write this in, in Scala, really? Format statement line. And then at the end, actually, in my case, this would be uh, this four dots. That's it. Collect joining. Yep, pretty much. And the Scala equivalent, I think with, with this, I think we, 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 we will finish this, right? Because I think we've covered what we promised to cover. But the, I'm curious about the equivalent. How, how short would that be in Scala? Collect, collectors, joining. Omar. All right, so let me take the first thing. So let's call this first piece as this thing. And then the final piece, which is uh, the total amount and frequent renter points. Uh, I'm going to simply copy this. Apparently I can't copy. Are you yes, re I'm, I refactoring didn't. stuff? No, I'm, I'm, my hands are off. Uh, can you see, can you, can you edit the code now? Okay, I, I can see the code now. So we have amount owned plus whatever. Okay. Uh, my, my code is, okay. My code highlighting is broken, but I think uh, we're doing all, all right. So I'm going to have a to do here to compute. You don't see now. colors anymore? <laughs> um, so assuming that, let's call this, total amount as zero, assuming this, um, the final piece is this thing. And then you have rental stream map. Okay, so I'm gonna have second piece as uh, rentals map format statement line. Okay, this format statement line, by the way, could be pulled to the, to the rental class. So I'm going to push it, push it above. Let's call this format statement line. I think here. And this would return this thing, and my pasting doesn't work. Um, you need I'm to have. Did it, wait, did you, you did paste. I did paste, but it takes a while for me to, to see that. Maybe compute price, but I need to take the compute price with you also. Yeah, but compute price is, is part of ah. the. Yeah, right, right, right. You're, you're right, you're right. Okay, cool. My, my code highlighting is broken, but I, I hope my compiler. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have this, and then we are going to map with underscore format statement line. So this is now a um, set of strings, and so I need to compute that to a list for the same reasons as, I, as we did before. And the interesting question uh, of how to concatenate that is you're saying the delimiter is comma, right? So we have make string here with a comma. This is basically equivalent to the collect collect jo collectors joining thing that you that you wrote earlier. Very nice. And then at the end you will return, right? Yeah. So the result, uh, the statement, I'm going to return first piece plus second piece plus final piece. So this is the return. Super cool. Now, assuming that we compute total amount and total amount is, uh, 
this is basically a sum, right? So I'm going to about total amount. I'm going to say this is an int and this is rentals to list map underscore compute price and then sum at the end. So this is pretty much the same thing. And this we finished of... at the same time. Very good. Very good. Excellent. 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 Absolutely excellent. Right. There are some questions that's um, uh, interesting to see the performance impact, Emmanuel, about the uh, performance of doing this in Java and streaming multiple times the same collection. Uh, I will tell you uh, in short, is performance impact is zero. Uh, I can discuss with you if you want, but maybe not sure, not sure if now. It's the, the, I want to compare just the functional style, the performance stuff of Java I want to leave out for today. Um, but uh, now, uh, since it's, we're coming to, to an end, it is from Peru. Hi, <laughs> Julio. So, um, but yeah, first of all, thanks so much for, for, for this discussion. Very good. I have to confess one thing here. Um, when I learned Scala, I think four, four, four years ago, something, um, I had to learn it because I had to, to, to discuss with, with a group about Scala. But then when I came back to, to Java, I was depressed. After a week of Scala, I was depressed in Java. I was like going to the work. Oh my God. Oh my, do you have getters over here? Blah. That was the feeling that I got when I came back from Scala. But then what I left from what I, what I learned from Scala, that's the purpose of today. So folks, um, values, immutable uh, variables. That's what Daniel showed us in extensor. Then he, he said uh, 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 functions with one, I mean, as, as short as possible. Very short functions. Look, this function basically is what? It's three little lines of code. And because I insisted, because the original file was a one liner, if you remember, he so started doing the, just one plus and then if, super cool. So short, one liner function are, are a thing, are, all right, are, Daniel, are, are a pattern, are something that you want to go for. Scala. Yeah, now code is much easier to read if you write short functions because the Scala expressions like the map chains and the folds and the reduces and make strings and stuff like that are very, very compact. And so you don't want a hundred lines of those, you want like two lines of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a, I think it's a, I think Spark is written in Scala. And yes. his main competitor has three times more lines of code or something like that. I think it was a metric at some point. They were, they were, they were saying Scala is so much more compact, indeed. Yep. And uh, usually the Scala, I think, yeah, big data analysis or, or uh, uh, where is Scala most used in your in your experience? Just they're used. Uh, Scala is used in two main areas. One for heavily distributed and highly uh, highly responsive backends, and they're built on uh, streaming libraries or um, high performance functional libraries like Cat's Effect, Zio, or the actor model like Akka. So if you heard about Aka or Aka streams, uh, these kinds of libraries power some of the some of the high, the really reactive system. Uh, the Disney subscription service, if you if you if you know that, is heavily heavily based on Scala and Aka. Um, and so that's one aspect. And the second aspect is big data computation, as Victor mentioned in Apache Spark. Uh, Apache Spark is probably the most used and probably the fastest current uh, big data processor. So a computational engine, and that is written in Scala. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. So when you have super high scalability in Scala, right? Uh, interesting, interesting. So folks, um, or maybe Daniel, do you want to point out some other things that I didn't highlight at the end? What other things we need to take from, from all this? I think you've, you've pretty much covered this. So um, for, from my point of view, I wanted to show the functional style of writing code. And uh, to instill this pattern of moving away from the mutation style, imperative, do this, do this, do this code. And in terms of expression code, like what is, what is this value expressed in terms of? And if you take a look at, for example, the frequent renter points, which, which is a, this is a really complex computation happening, happening in a single line. And the, the, the thing that I want people to take away from this is, thinking in terms of expressions and thinking in terms of how can I use these, these pieces and combine them together to obtain a single value instead of do this, do this, iterate through that, do this and iterate and uh, accumulate and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And especially valuable for highly concurrent or multi-threading or maybe 
uh, super scalable systems like Scala is best known for. Nice. Yes, especially if you use func pure functional programming, this will work miracles in a multi-threaded or distributed environment because you're sure that nobody else is going to mutate your data. Makes perfect sense. Yes, indeed. So it, it suits well where the where Scala is, is most used. Indeed, indeed. Um, Peter, if OO is combining data plus function, wait, wait a second. What, what, I, what I learned when I, when I discussed Scala back then is that Scala is a purely object-oriented and functional language. Yes, it's a, it has a, this blend of object orientation and functional programming, which is... So int, their int is an object, my friend. Their int is an object. There are, if you look closer, there, is no, there are no primitives over here. Uh, in particular, int maps to the Java integer, the, the, the primitive data type, but um, the, everything that you describe in Scala map to Java objects just fine, so... Uh... But that's in the compiled bytecode. But in here, yeah, you can you can take the, the, the extension functions that you can put there, and uh, how do you call them? Uh, how do you call them in Scala uh, when you add a function to an existing class? Uh, yeah, you call them extension uh, extension functions. This, this is like the the latest terminology. People, the academics, call that type enrichment, which is really really boring. And we, the down dogs, call them pimping my library. Pimping my library. So you could add functions to integer. That's what I or what I want to say here. So yes. it feels like an object. That, that's so. Yeah, Peter goes along and says, "Yeah, indeed, in an object-oriented point um, world, the objects are supposed to be uh, be changeable and to guard the invariance of their state." In a sense, in a sense, you might be right because object orientation doesn't say you should have immutable, but neither that do they say you should have. I mean, you could guard invariance. You could guard invariance. Uh, when you add a rental, you could you could guard invariance not to exceed five rentals, for example, by doing an if over here, right? I think I think we, we could we could guard invariance even in immutable object because uh, basically when you want to change an object in Scala in a pure style like this, what you do you create a new object. But what, what, you, could, you, could, you could do you can actually do that, right? So you can you can say if how, how do you type this if um, uh, 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 rentals dot uh, what do you have there? Uh, length, size, what, what's the? Days size? rented? Size, size. If size, size plus one is over than five, then throw. You could do that, right? New legal argument exception. Or am I doing a stupid thing in, 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 uh, in Scala over here? What I would do is move this if statement uh, as an assertion here at the construction phase and leave the method yes. pure. But how do you do that? I don't, I don't recall. So you can say uh, yeah. at the... At the, um, uh, at the construction phase, you can say assert and say rentals size is less than or equal to five or whatever. Basically, this, the, the state invariance will go into the, the constructor. In, yes. And by into, the way, another thing, where is the constructor? <laughs> where the heck is the constructor? I mean, my constructor. This like, is the constructor. When you define the class, you also define its primary constructor. What the heck? <laughs> yes, perfect, perfect. I forgot that. Very good. Cool, cool. Oh, that's cool about um, invariance, right? Because that's what object orientation is supposed to do: guard invariance. So you could, you could, you could. But, but Emmanuel, but at the moment of the assertion, the new object is already created, right? Not quite. Ah, I don't know. Uh, no, this is run at construction phase. So this is run alongside the constructor. So basically, you don't really have an inst. I mean. The instance won't get created and returned to anyone if this fails, right? Yep. Right. Would you program an even sourcing system in Scala, for example, Peter asks. Oh, sure. There is a there is a, a specific library for the Aka actor model. It's called Aka Persistence, and this implements the event sourcing, uh, the event sourcing pattern. Right. Uh, Sergio asks, how would you know if it's a field or a method if you, you if you don't put if you don't put brackets? I think that was a chapter in the book at some point. Yes, so this is what Scala, what the Scala syntax wanted to achieve with these kinds of like accessor methods. Uh, at call site, you don't uh, you can't tell if you if you're looking at code in Scala in, a, in in Notepad, you won't be able to tell. But IntelliJ shows that to you. Uh, these these purples. Are fields and the not purples are methods. Yeah, but the, the the purpose of the language was to hide this, really, right? Yeah. So basically, blend the accessing of fields 
in three major ways. First, um, the computation in Scala can be eagerly evaluated in, the in terms of fields. So when you create a data structure, that field is automatically created at construction time, eagerly in the exact moment. It can be lazily evaluated, but memoized in the sense that whenever you refer to that field again, you'll, return to, you'll refer to the same value. So computed once at need time without recomputation. So these are lazy fields. And the third, the, the third computation time is lazily evaluated and not memoized in terms of methods. And this is recomputed every time you need it. So this is why we blend the naming style of fields and methods with the same name without any parentheses. Super cool, Super cool indeed. Chris asks a more technical question. I believe Lightband Aka components are not free. Akka still... is open source. Akka is free and open source. Lightband offers some commercial subscription for the Akka platform with external like metrics and tooling and configuration options and cluster setups and stuff like that. But Akka itself, the framework is free and open source. Manuel, so good you're here. <laughs> very good, very good. Thanks very much for accepting this to do this with me. And, Thanks uh, so much I... for inviting me. Uh, it, was, it was really fun. Yeah, for me, it's also very fun. I did, never did that in parallel coding. It's so cool. I mean, we were talking at the same time in different languages. It's insane, right? Good. Uh, any other questions, folks? Do you have any questions? Any leftover things? Um, maybe you can help me anyway. Um, right. So let me put some conclusions on the, on, the, on the screen again. This is what we try to prove. Uh, right? And uh, if there are something that we need to take out, maybe yeah? side effects are a code smell. That would be a good takeaway from this. Uh, you don't, it doesn't matter, Peter. You can, you're reading both, <laughs> both YouTube and Zoom. What do you, what tool do you use for pair program? It's called Team Code with Me. Code with Me. It's not very mature yet. There are some times when you, when we prepared this, we had some <laughs> arguments with this, with, with this, with this tool. But yeah, it didn't fail us right in the demo right today. But the, Daniel wasn't able to to use refactoring options on your on his side. The, the NVT one, yeah, you should try it out. Good for remote pair programming. Really. Good. Any other questions? Any other questions? If not, this will remain on YouTube. So it's already there. The link is on the meetup page. It's public. And it, when I end the stream, it's already there. Yes, Daniel, rock the GVM. That's the good. Yeah, I wanted, I, I wanted to uh, to uh, put the, the name of the website where you can find me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, my email is daniel at rock the JVM. So daniel at rock the JVM .com. You can reach out to me and ask about Scala. I can, I'm happy to answer any questions. You can find my content at rockthejvm.com. On YouTube at rockthejvm, I have a channel I post every week uh, with topics related to Scala and functional programming and effects, uh, actors, threads, Apache Spark, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, and at Twitter, you can find me at rockthejvm, um, posting half-baked jokes <laughs> at Twitter related to Scala and uh, Java and garbage collection and stuff like that. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm really happy to help. Uh, hit me up at Daniel at Rock the JVM. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for your... Uh, Thanks so much, Victor. Thank you. Uh, that's it, folks. So see you next time. All have right. a nice weekend, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Have fun. Bye-bye. So, and that's it. <laughs>